Psalm 8, O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You have taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppose you. When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority, the flocks and the herds and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims the ocean currents. O oh Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Hello everyone. Wherever you're watching, we're, we're glad you've joined us this morning. Uh, it's not the morning now, as you can see, uh, but we're continuing a series in Psalms. And for uh, our topic, our, our chapter, our Psalm for the week, uh, it made a lot of sense to film at night. This week we're in Psalm 8. Uh, and this is a beautiful Psalm of praise uh, that David writes to God and in the psalm, he expresses just the amazement uh, for how big uh, God is, the God of creation, the God of the universe. Uh, and David's just living in this wonder uh, that God cares for us. Psalm 8 starts and ends the same way, uh, with an acknowledgement of who God is uh, and that the world and the universe reveals his name. Well, he is Yahweh He's also king and he's also creator, supreme and powerful, but not a distant deity. Uh, he's the ultimate authority, yet intimately close. So David starts out acknowledging who God is. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You have taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppose you. While verse 1 illustrates the transcendence of God, how God is so much more than something normal that we experience, verse 2 draws us back to the fact that while God is so much more, his presence can be expressed by even the most innocent and inexperienced. I like that my boys have the same opportunity to experience Jesus as I do. Even after I've had many more years of reading the Bible and, and praying and talking to God, uh, going to Bible school, etc. Uh, my kids have, my boys still have the same um, opportunity to experience Jesus. And I think that says something about, the, how, about how wonderful our God is. The thoughts and words of our children have power. Children's words can often find their way past all the guards that we've set up in our hearts, or even parents' hearts specifically. Our children can teach us things. I know my boys sure have. David sees that God can accomplish things through our children, accomplishing kingdom victories through them. This isn't a standalone idea. David brings about something that, that the next few verses he will emphasize, and that God can use the weak, the insignificant, to accomplish big things for his kingdom. David in verses uh, three and four writes, when I look up at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them, human beings that you should care for them? David brings us to a place of wonder as we consider the expanse and intricacy of our universe. The more I researched and read and watched on the topic of the size of the universe and how it exists, the enormity of it was almost overwhelming. If you've watched the conversation that Steve and I had, uh, you get a size of just how great and how big our universe is. It's hard to even comprehend. We know way more about the size of the universe now than what David did, and yet he still captures the sense of what it, look, what it would look like to look up at the sky. He helps us capture the wonder of our insignificance in comparison to the universe. Uh, in 1990, um, 
the Voyager 1 spacecraft took a picture of the Earth from 6.4 billion kilometers away. And on seeing it, Carl Sagan, who is an astronomer, he said this, our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by the point of this pale light. And that pale light is, is the Earth. In this is rooted a deep sense of humility as we understand how small we are on the scale of the grandness that is our universe. David poses his statements as questions to God. God, do you really love us and care for us when this is what you can create? This resonates with me uh, as I sit under the stars and consider the fact that I'm looking at light from stars that originated more than four years ago. It draws me into a posture of humility so small on the scale of his created world and yet worth so much to him. David emphasized to us that humans are at the center of God's heart. There's a confidence in these verses that God thinks about us and acts on our behalf. Despite our small and rather fragile state and our insignificant presence, God absolutely thinks the world of us. In this all, we learn more about our created identity. Unlike the universe being formed by his fingers, we were given life by his breath. We have a deep personal connection. In order to understand the depth of his love for us, it's helpful to consider the unfathomable size of the universe to gain some perspective on to just how much he loves us. We learn more about what this looks like in the next few verses. Verses 5 to 8, And yet you made them only a little lower than God, and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them in charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority, the flocks and the herds and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims the ocean currents. Humanity's role in creation is not of glorious self-achievement. God's the subject of the story. He's the one who made, crowned, gave dominion, and who put it under our authority. He gave us responsibility as caretakers, gave us the human, gave us the human family authority to govern and steward his creation. Picking up the Genesis call in chapters 1 and 2 to care for the world in relationship with him. It's important for us to see the sharing of responsibility in this passage. God's allowing us into a role that involves intentionally caring for his creation, not just our fellow humans, but also the world and all creatures in it. The dominion refers to our responsibility as caretakers to live wisely, to not live as people who seek to mine the world of all its resources, but we care for and look after his creation for the glory of God and the well-being of everyone who lives on the earth, present and future. These past a few verses have reminded us of some truly foundational truths about our existence. We're taught that God made us and he made us glorious and that he made us for a high and worthy calling. However, to focus completely on us misses the point. While, while the world often has revolved around us, this psalm doesn't begin or end this way. This psalm is a celebration of the majesty of God. Verse 9 ends the chapter, O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. When we consider all that God has done for us, how he has gifted and called us, our praises should fill the earth. As we consider these three areas of wonder, wonder at the expanse of the universe, wonder at how small we are in comparison to it, and then also the wonder as we consider how loved we are and how he's called us into the responsibility as caretakers, David calls us to praise. To me, when I'm standing under the northern lights as they dance in the night sky or look up at the stars and consider just how many there are, sometimes I can't help but burst out singing. Uh, it's a little bit safer to do that here. Um, not many people listening in. Um, but I feel like it's a holy experience to stand and sit under the stars. I feel so small and yet God, I know God loves me more than I can even imagine. I hope you get the opportunity soon to stand under the night sky and take in the experience. 
We may take it for granted, but it caused David to break out into song. Let's praise God for the wonder that is our universe, that the God who created the stars is still pursuing our hearts. Seeking an opportunity to, re to reveal more of us, of, to us of just how much we mean to him. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth.